What up folks, it's Alex, it's Friday, which can only mean one thing, it's 5 Minute Friday. And today I'm going to show you how you can use any image file, so a JPEG or a PNG, as a background texture for your text. So you can create some really cool effects like this fire text, ice text, earth text, maybe you want to make some paper text, or even a Mr. Alex tech face texture. Whatever you want to do, you can just import your image and use it as the texture for your text. It's a really cool, simple, easy effect. So let's open DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how. If you're looking for some images to get you started, I can highly recommend pexels.com. It's a really great website for free stock images and videos. Everything on this site is completely free. All I've done is typed in texture within the search bar and we've got loads of options of things to download and to start having a play with. So here we are in Resolve and I'm on the edit tab as usual. Now all we need to do is open up the effects library, expand the toolbox, click on titles and we're grabbing the text plus not the regular text but the fusion based text plus title and we're just going to drag that onto our timeline give it a click open up the inspector and you'll see this screen here so we're on this little t tab here which is just our text tab and in the style of text we can just type whatever we want to type so i'm just going to put fire for this one we can change our font so let's go with monster at and we can adjust our size, our tracking, do all the usual things you'd want to do. Then all we're going to do is click on this icon here, the little paintbrush, and this is the shading tab. Now there's loads of cool stuff you can do within the shading tab, which I'll cover in another video. But to get straight to what we're doing, all you need to do is scroll down and you can see type there and it will say solid by default. Click on that drop down and change it to image. The next one down is image source. Change that from tool to clip. Once that's set to clip, you'll see this color file option and a browse button underneath. Give browse a click and then browse for the JPEGs or PNGs which you've just downloaded. So I've got this fire bonfire one here. I'm just gonna open this up and straight away, it will apply that picture to the background of this text. Now, if you want to, you can go back to the text tab. We can change our font, so let's try something else. We can then increase the size and we can even just change the text if we want to. So I've added the word fire twice and you can see it's doing exactly what we want it to do. So I'm just going to head back into the shading tab and show you a few other options. So down here, you've got the mapping angle. So if we just rotate that, you can change the angle of the image that's underneath our text. You can change the size so you can zoom in and out of the texture. And then underneath that, you've got something called mapping level, and it's currently set to character. Now, what that means is every single character, so the F, the I, the R, and the E, is using that texture separately. So you'll, you'll have some duplication of the texture. If we change that from character to word, you can see now the image is just being used from the F to the E. So it's using, being used across the entire word. And that's happening on both the first fire and the second fire. If we change that to full image, it'll just apply that fire background we've imported across every word within this text field. So you can just change how it looks. Now, if we want to start adding some other cool stuff to this, we can. So within the shading tab, you've got select element and it's number one. If you change that to number two and then click enabled, by default, that will give us a red outline. We can come and change the color if we want to. So let's just make this outline white instead, like so. And then another one, if we go to select element again and change it to number three, by default, number three will give us a black shadow. So I'm going to enable that. Now we can't actually see that because this background looks black. Now the background actually isn't black. It's actually alpha at the moment, which means it's see-through. So if I just drag my text up under my video track two, just grab a video from my timeline. I can put that underneath and you can now see we've got that black drop shadow because we've enabled our element number three and the alpha background is completely clear so we can see the video playing underneath. If you're trying to do a title screen or a chapter screen or something, you want a solid color background, there's an easy way to do that as well. Go to the second tab in, which is the layout tab, expand the background, and then you can just change the color of this background. So let's just make the background red. By default, again, it's gonna have some alpha on it, which is why it's a little bit see-through. All you need to do is come down to this alpha area here, it's on zero, drag that all the way up to one, 
and then it'll be completely opaque. You can't see through it. And then you've got fire with a cool background, with an outline, a drop shadow on whatever color background you want it to be. And it's as easy as that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs up, comments or feedback, shove them down below. And if you're new here and you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm hmm.